Hey folks, how's it going? This is the final in my four cases on Arisa Supreme Court update. Uh, this is IBM versus Yonda. Hit the disclaimer that this is just educational, it's not legal advice or financial advice, and all opinions are only mine. So I have hit these other cases, Thol, Salima, Putnam, and this is Yonder. So uh, IBM versus Yonda or Yonder uh, is about stock drop and insider trading laws. So let's hit that overview. Uh, it's the Retirement Plans Committee of IBM versus Yonder. Uh, the IBM ESOP fiduciaries uh, did not disclose certain non-public information or inside information about IBM stock. Uh, do ESOP fiduciaries have a duty to act on that inside information and is that lawful? Uh, the Second Circuit said that uh, a prudent fiduciary must make such disclosures based on inside information. Uh, the Supreme Court then vacated, and uh, they wanted more guidance, so they sent it down for more argumentation. So they, there's not a lot we know here, so I'm going to go quickly through this. It's actually very complex, but we still don't know the final outcome because of what the Supreme Court did. Uh, the IBM 401k is actually a KSOP, which is a 401k with an ESOP within it. Um, their IBM microelectronics business was struggling uh, for most of 2014 until uh, the sale was announced. It was inside information. So should fiduciaries have used their inside knowledge of these uh, of the struggling um, uh, business within IBM? Should they have disclosed the risks? Should it have been uh, disclosed by IBM on its securities disclosures? So stock drop is uh, generally an ESOP concept in ERISA. Uh, the claim here is fiduciaries should have protected participants who were holding IBM stock in the KSOP or the ESOP. Um, should they, they should have used the inside knowledge and disclosed those risks is the claim. Whereas the plan argued no ERISA duty to act on or disclose inside information. Um, and the government arguing uh, for the SEC and the DOL said there's no separate ERISA duty to disclose inside information. Uh, the district court uh, decided that the plaintiffs uh, did not meet the Dudenhofer standard, which I'll quickly get into, but it's called more harm than good. Whereas the Second Circuit reversed and said Dudenhofer was met, and then the Supreme Court vacated the Second Circuit and said, well, they need more information to determine that between uh, ERISA and securities. Um, so what is a stock drop? That, or that's what is a stock drop. So Dudenhofer, just quickly, is a case from 2014 that uh, requires a certain pleading standard. Uh, the plaintiff has to allege that basically uh, the pr a prudent fiduciary couldn't have known that an alternative uh, could not have concluded an alternative would do more harm than good. Basically, they must have known if they were prudent that this was the only course of action was to do something else. So basically that it was just clearly imprudent and it limits the ability of the plaintiffs to make a claim. Uh, they have to dismiss all the alternatives before they can substantiate a fiduciary breach. So specifically in Yonder, uh, the harm of inevitable disclosure increases over time. That's a sort of the, their generalized argument. And does that satisfy the Dudenhofer more harm than good? standard. That's the question that was uh, submitted. So we've got a per curiam opinion that came out January 14th uh, saying that neither uh, two different arguments from the plan and from the government had not been previously raised below regarding uh, uh, whether there either is no duty at all, which is what the uh, what IBM, the plan fiduciaries, had argued. And the government had argued that you can uh, dis you can disclose, there's no duty to disclose uh, information under ERISA that is not governed by the inside information rules, the insider trading rules already under SEC and DOL uh, guidance. So basically there is no extra. Uh, the Supreme Court wanted to get more argument, especially for the SEC and DOL views um, to understand it. Kagan filed a concurrence joined by Ginsburg that uh, uh, pretty pretty much coming down clearly that there, there probably is a duty signaling that she thought that uh, probably the plaintiffs, the participants were right here. And ERISA can impose a duty to disclose inside information in many situations uh, and that it might be appropriate in uh, Yonder. And Gorsuch had a concurrence pretty different getting into conceptual issues like fiduciary versus set law, like all the different hats 
that a corporate officer might wear as an employee, uh, as an executive, as um, an officer of the company, and as a fiduciary to the plan, that all of these are different roles. And the inside information uh, is known under your set law rule, basically as an officer of the company. But it's not known as an, uh, an ESOP or plan fiduciary. So how can the plan fiduciary include inside information when that's an, a set law or function? An interesting idea. I'm not sure that uh, most of the other justices will accept it. Maybe Thomas. But uh, So we don't really know where it's going to land. So it's a little hard. I think ultimately we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, the SEC and DOL were pretty critical of um, Yonder. So I think uh, they were pretty relatively critical to plaintiffs. Uh, it, Dudenhofer is still uh, in place. It's still a little difficult right now since we don't know how this is going to end up, but it, it, we should still presume it's in place and not uh, substantially changed by Yonder. Uh, and then just long term, I think the, the larger context is that, uh, as usual, stock drops are, are still a threat. I think Dudenhofer reduced some of the risk of them, uh, but maybe uh, they're, they're still out there and we should consider them. Obviously, uh, this twist on uh, or this, this consideration of inside information, it's just always going to be difficult. Uh, these kinds of things are, are complex. Uh, you might be able to partially ins insulate uh, by removing fiduciaries with inside information, but that gets into weird questions like who who is a fiduciary? Is the plan sponsor, the company itself, a fiduciary? So that, that might not actually be as helpful as you might have considered. Um, and that's something that you should always consider. You should discuss with legal counsel to, to figure out if that makes sense for your situation. I think that that's, that's complex, and I, I wouldn't try to rely on that too much. Um, and then uh, always a clear investment policy uh, can help. It might help specifically with claims like this, but uh, your ESOP or KSOP should have an investment policy. And ideally with some, some rules on what you're going to do with inside information. I think setting down clear guidelines uh, shows that you're trying to go through the steps, trying to get to the right answer. And that's always helpful uh, just to show good faith, even if maybe you're not getting exactly the right answer because we don't have full guidance from the courts. Uh, you should at least try to answer the question and you should absolutely get legal advice uh, to consider all of the different factors before, before proceeding. Um, so I, I think uh, ultimately where we are is we're just waiting. We're waiting for more information. It's pretty complex. Dudenhofer is still there. Um, and really all ESOPs can do is just sort of review the internal rules on inside information. Are you, are you, uh, have, or have you fully considered all of this? Uh, what would you be doing in this situation? Because uh, uh, having clear internal rules would be really helpful. So those are the four cases now. And uh, if you have not seen them, go ahead and hit Thole and Slima and, uh, and Putnam and uh, sort of try to get a fuller picture. I think this one is especially uh, difficult and, and frustrating for me because we don't really know what's happening uh, yet. Um, but uh, if you are at risk, if you are an ESOP or a KSOP, uh, you, you should hopefully already have a good sense of stock drop and Dudenhofer. But if you don't, absolutely, you know, that's something that you need to uh, start taking a look at and decide uh, how you're going to approach those questions and have some kind of a framework. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, and uh, thanks for your time.